Euh, moi, je suis Carole, je suis la fille d'Yves et euh, Donc euh, là, je suis en week-end euh, parce que j'habite à Lyon maintenant. Et je viens à peu près une fois par mois parce que j'ai un fils et qui vient voir son papy et sa mamie. <rire> La famille Redouin, les frères sont toujours euh, très proches de l'agriculture. Euh, bon, euh, Jean-Claude, agriculteur euh, retraité, euh, Bertrand qui est toujours resté très proche de l'agriculture, Yves, euh, ancien cultivateur, les réunions de famille, les repas de famille, euh, oui. l'agriculture est, est la base de la discussion, c'est certain, c'est certain. The Redouins had been tenant farmers, but when the estate owner decided to sell the land, Yves had to buy it or lose it. He's had to take on a manual job to make ends meet. Je travaille dans les travaux publics. Je suis opérateur sur une centrale d'Orbet. Une fois que j'ai travaillé à l'extérieur, là, oui. ma femme travaillait plus à l'exploitation. Oui, oui. Il lui arrivait de prendre le tracteur, d'aller ah, labourer. Oui. Je lui ai préparé le matériel oui, et tout, sûr, et puis il que... s'est ça, ça arrivé que ma femme prenait le tracteur et allait travailler. Là. With chickens to keep her company, Madame Redouin does her Monday wash in the barnyard. Ma mère avait une vie de labeur, je pense. Et les dernières années de sa vie, elle était malade et, et, et elle faisait quand même le travail et elle a trop travaillé. Je ne pense pas que ma mère était aussi disponible qu'on ne l'est maintenant avec ses enfants. C'est vrai que je n'étais pas extrêmement proche de ma mère au point de vue... Euh... Oui, pas extrêmement proche. Et, et que, et que, que c'est vrai que je me suis... J'étais jeune aussi peut-être, j'analysais mal et quand j'ai perdu ma mère, je me suis rendu compte que je n'avais pas assez apprécié ma mère, pas assez... Voilà. Eve and Nadege's daughter, Carole, studied in Germany and America, has a business degree and a senior job in a company in Lyon. She has no ambition to carry on the family farming tradition. Le métier, d'une part, ne m'intéresse pas. D'autre part, je trouve que ce n'est pas un métier d'avenir, surtout avec l'exploitation du papa. Je pense que ce serait une, une exploitation plus grande. On peut gérer ça au même titre qu'une entreprise euh, autre qu'agricole. Et ce n'était pas non plus dans mon tempérament de revenir ici. Je n'exploite plus cette ferme aujourd'hui, car les prix agricoles sont moins élevés qu'avant. La surface n'étant pas tellement grande, ce n'était plus rentable. J'ai donc loué cette ferme à un fermier à côté. C'est toute mon enfance, je ne veux pas vendre ces bâtiments. Je veux que ça reste à la ferme. Ce qui a motivé cette décision, c'est donc le décès de Christelle, qui, qui, où, on, où chacun, enfin dans, dans notre cellule familiale, a, a, a décidé d'avoir une autre philosophie de vie. Elle s'est dit que maintenant, ça ne sert à rien de travailler comme un fou sur... et pas profiter de l'instant présent. Christelle, even Nadege's only other child, died of leukemia when she was 23. Pour papa et maman, je pense que euh, l'arrivée de Léo fait aussi que ça change la vie. Ça, ça donne d'autres objectifs, d'autres motivations. On ne reste pas sur ce qu'on là où on s'est arrêté à un moment donné. Donc ici, c'est la tombe de Christelle. Euh, je voulais simplement montrer la différence par rapport à tout le reste, parce que c'est vraiment euh, différent des autres. Il y a plein de fleurs, c'est un moyen de s'en occuper toujours. Et euh, c'est aussi le... C'est pas si tu es quelqu'un de jeune, et, et c'est comme ça qu'on la représente. Voilà. C'est quelqu'un qui était plus lié euh, à la maison, à mes parents. À... Et je pense qu'elle serait peut-être revenue, ou plus tard, euh, peut-être elle aurait habité cette maison. À long terme, c'est un problème pour moi. 
pourrais pas vendre parce que c'est ma maison. C'est ma maison de là où j'ai vécu, où j'étais enfant, où j'ai des souvenirs de ma soeur, de mon grand-père, de mes parents. Et si je dois le faire, ça m'arrachera le cœur. Hein. À rattraper le bout du monde. Bruce, Arlene and Dick Pratt revisit the house in Glidden, Iowa, where Robert Kappa photographed them in 1947. Like many such homesteads in the Midwest, it is no longer a farm. The old family home is now owned by a country-loving insurance salesman and his family. We never knew your parents, but, but I've thought about them a lot and, and wondered about them. Uh, when did they move off the farm? And well, they the winding down kind of came one step at a time, and uh, yeah. they, they rented out part of the ground that they had f at first, and then gradually decided to, to uh, stop the active farming of the ground itself. Mom agonized for quite a while, but finally decided to have a, a household goods sale. It was a kind of a social event because uh, people could come by and say goodbye to them. Dad was showing signs of Alzheimer's at that time, and that's, that affected their decision to make that move. And, and that was a, a traumatic uh, decision because after being in the same house for 54 years, it was quite a change for them. My dad was probably a quieter person than any of the three of us, and uh, didn't communicate as much as perhaps he could have. There was not a lot of emotion shown in the family. I didn't feel like they talked talk to my father. I didn't know how he felt, how he thought about things, because he didn't ever talk about those things. Probably when I talk about not meeting my father's expectations, it uh, may have been what I thought he wanted. Yeah. Now that I look back, I don't know what that was. The boys want to be farmers like their father. Arlene wants to be a farmer's wife. It was just what I called a Pleasantville. I didn't fit here. I sometimes felt like the black sheep of the family. Uh, wanted to, uh, had, I knew I had to do something different. My dad and I got to where we weren't agreeing on things, and uh, I admire family members when they can work together, and, uh, but it, it wasn't working for us. I think that in some senses we were a typical family, but any family that you look at closely, you're going to find some things that are not all just perfect. <laughs> yeah, I learned how to party when I went to school. I don't think my parents had, uh, really appreciated that because uh, they, they kind of stopped the, the funding, the help with the, for the school, and, and so I was on my own. Cut off financially by his parents, Bruce left Iowa for 1960s California but was eventually to settle down and build a successful landscape architecture business in Oregon. Dick gave up farming for a career in banking. He's now retired to Arkansas, and Arlene moved to the big city. I like living in Chicago. I like the excitement. I like the kinds of culture that's available. Fifty years ago, I had said that I wanted to grow up and marry and become a farmer's wife. And uh, when I graduated from college, I instead came to the city and didn't make that choice. And I've been happy with that choice. Arlene teaches child development in a Chicago college. Her son, Jeff, is a careers consultant, one of Chicago's ambitious young professionals. 
I look at those photos back from them, and I mean, it's, it is my family, and it's, it's interesting to see my, my relatives when they're much younger, but I don't see that as part of my life, really. It's kind of funny and, and ironic, I think, because I'm much more of a city person, um, much more of an interest in things besides the, the white picket fence and such. In the spacious Presbyterian Church of Glidden, Iowa, the Pratt family sing the closing hymn. It would be such a bizarre thought for my grandparents to split up. I mean, that's not something we consider. They wouldn't. I mean, it's like they're married, and that's it, and that's their lives, and that's even what they felt. And if things weren't going very well, they would. That's the rule, and they'd stick by it. Why did my husband and I break up? We just weren't getting along. I regret that the marriage had to break up. I just felt that was a commitment that I made when I got married, and there was not a question about that. When it happened, it was hard to go through, but still, I feel that it's for the best. My parents had another child gone through a divorce, so I think they were shocked. How are you going to tell your parents who have been married for all those years and, and had taught me those values, supposedly, to, to stay married, that, uh, that my marriage was failing. And so it, 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 uh, that was another wedge between my parents and I. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, Bruce's son Dion lives with his wife Tanya and children Justin and Elizabeth in a happy American home his grandparents would be proud of. It's very different from his own childhood. Well, I don't remember uh, my dad's first divorce. I was uh, uh, two or three or something like that. She was an exciting woman. We had a, a lot of exciting times together. Uh, a lot of partying. Uh, vivacious, I guess, would be a, a good description of my first wife. Barbara Pratt, Dion's mother, ran into trouble with the law, leaving Dion in the care of his father. I think there was some drug dealing, that sort of thing. Um, and then the hospital, I think, was maybe uh, a mental thing that she had to have some help with. Bruce raised Dion himself, then remarried, divorced, and remarried again. Tanya's mother has also been married three times. The kids just love all their grandparents. They've got a pile of them too, you know. It's, uh, there's a lot of grandparents. Well, I think we know. have five grandmas for the kids and uh, yeah. uh, three grandpas uh, through divorces and remarriages no, okay. and that kind of stuff. We've been married longer Probably than some longer of our than parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we've got a great relationship. I think we both have a desire to make it all work. Seems like we've been able to not repeat our parents' mistakes. Oh, I think we're the last of the Prats of Glidden. Yeah, no, I think it would be a most unusual circumstance if somebody would come back here to live. And uh, We decided we weren't going to come back and live. Mm -hmm. You know, we decided that among us that there was no interest in living here. I remember after I graduated from college, I came back to visit and went to church and the minister of the time said, oh, now that you've completed college, now you can move back to Glidden and help us grow the church. <laughs> and I was like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> this is not where I'm going to go. In 1947, George Roger asked the Egyptian authorities for permission to photograph a farming family. Well, I took one look at them, and everything was all set up and ready, and, and, and the house was beautifully clean. And anyway, it was about two days before they'd let me go and see the family. Well, that immediately raised suspicion. You, you could tell he was no farmer immediately. You shook hands with you shake hands with an Egyptian f farmer who, who works the, 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 the soil himself. 